for better and worse, the stories we tell create the realities we experience. Journalist, novelist, and former BBC reporter Frank Delaney says the Irish are the unacknowledged luck makers of the world. The very Irish, Mr. Delaney links imagination, stories, and luck. It's ultimately about, about the way we are permitted to use the proceedings, to bring the proceedings of our imagination to bear upon facts. You know, never let the facts get in the way of a good story is what they say about flawed journalists, but they should say it about <laughs> talented novelists. <laughs> Indeed. This is, this, is very, this is a direction I hadn't expected. Uh, my brother years ago introduced me to, to the notion of a word called phatics. Fairly obscure. P-H-A-T-I-C-S. Uh, and and it, it essentially describes uh, uh, content-free, essentially, language. Essentially social grooming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, that is, there's a, turns out to be a substantial part of what most conversations are about. That there's, there's not, the point is not the contact, content. Uh, it is, it is just the engagement, the, the, uh, the, the, the grooming that goes on um, between and among people. The stories is where the content is. Different matter. Mm -hmm. And and everything around that is gloss, it's and so, not even gloss. It's largely uh, it's grooming. <laughs> it's social. It's grooming. so interesting that you say this. Several years ago, I used to do a language show on the BBC called mm -hmm. Word of Mouth, in which we looked at how we spoke and the things we say. And one of the things we discovered in that, that in Britain there was going on, this fascinates me, a national observation, where thousands of people all over the country wore, for seven days, low-powered, slow tape recorders. And everything they said in their families, and they were, they were carefully selected, scientifically selected as, as groups, was noted down, was, was, and then transcribed. When you read the transcripts of a family, a typical working class, lower middle class, middle class, upper middle class family at dinner in the evening, and listen to what they're saying, the thing I was immediately struck by was the absence of long passages. Therefore, there was no story going on. Now, I've been accustomed to reading court transcripts as a reporter, and court transcripts are fascinating because they fall into two parts. This is speaking to your point. They're full of fatics, but fatics with a barb where one lawyer is trying to get the advantage of a witness. And then you get the witness statements. And that's where the story comes in. And the difference is this. Here is the total difference. The power, the strength is in the story. Let me give you one other quick example. I wrote a book some years ago called Simple Courage about a, mm -hmm. a sea disaster in which all the crew who survived gave evidence to the U.S. Coast Guard in Lafayette Street in New York. And some of them had language challenges and so on and so forth. It was a multinational crew. And the chairman of the board, a wonderful naval officer called Shackleton, was interviewing people very carefully. Snippets of question, snippets of answer. And then, on the last day, the star of the show appears, the captain who has survived and he gives evidence. And his evidence runs uninterrupted for several pages at a time. Uninterrupted, and it is utterly brilliant. Why? Because he is telling the story of what happened. I would think, this is, this is a leap, uh, but it's congruent. I would think that in some ways, the, stories that he, the story he was able to tell he was able to tell because he had that sense of continuity. He, he lived his life that way so that he had the, I mean, I think that's part of the courage, that kind of integrity of that. that allows you yeah. to see things in continuity, uh, in coherence, and over both both uh, in, in space, but also over time. Plus the, Just plus, a theory. <laughs> plus the fact, Bill, that he was a Scandinavian and accustomed to long stories. <laughs>